One, thanks for coming. I know that, uh, as you can see, there was a lot of excitement last week with our team and, and what happened in our players' lounge in the locker room area. So today you'll get a chance to see what they saw on Friday. We tried to hold the players' lounge for the players to see first before any recruits saw it so that they wouldn't spoil the gusto of it. But um, there was a lot of work going on. You can't imagine how much got done in the last 30 days once we got the project going. And Alan Muncy with ART, uh, is also a, a donor here, but uh, his company and all their subs did amazing work upstairs in the Players' Lounge. And then Jack Porter was our contractor that designed and implemented what you're going to see primarily on the first floor. Uh, as you go down, we have an NFL hallway, which will recognize uh, all of our draft choices and undrafted by team, and then highlighting obviously some of the most recent drafts. We've got a couple areas to display Lamar Jackson. One will be right behind us in the hallway, which has uh, got the infamous uh, mannequin of him jumping over the Syracuse player. We withheld the Syracuse player for obvious <laughs> reasons for his family. Um, but in all seriousness, that, it's an amazing uh, display. I sent, took pictures of that, sent it to Lamar's mom last week as we were getting it put in. And then upstairs in the players' lounge, we also have kind of a memorial to, to Lamar again. And you'll see kind of a quasi-locker with another mannequin and some wall display for him upstairs. But it, it's all pretty special. Uh, yes, we have the cool factors and things you'll see when you get up there. And I'll talk a little bit about that as you get up there. The one thing to note about the players' lounge is, you know, as we got the last year, we rushed to get the building, just the structure built. And we really didn't go forward with some of the components. And then obviously as the season went on, we decided to wait uh, until we got through all this and we'd come back and deal with it uh, this summer. Bringing Coach Satterfield in gave an opportunity to get a head coach's uh, input on that too. We obviously had a lot from our own team already in the books, but if he wanted to put any of his own splash on it, he could, although he allowed a lot of our creative design to happen. Uh, didn't have a lot of demands, frankly. He, I think he saw what we had in place and we moved forward with it. When you get to the players' lounge area, it's meant to let the players hang out. I know you've heard plenty about players not being upstairs or being in coaches' offices or not hanging out here. It was pretty stale up there last year, to be honest, uh, if you went in there. Now you'll go in there, it's, uh, the, the wall coatings are different, there's color. Uh, you know, even talking to my own son, what a guy's that age one who's a sophomore here, you know, gaming. Uh, and a place to rest and a place to study. Let's so, let you talk about that when we get up there. Yeah, we can talk about that up there. I was trying to get a <laughs> yeah, cover off. Like well, I figured they're going to be going on and but taking the uh, pictures of it. But film, you say it okay. Yeah, we spent a lot of time talking to Coach Satterfield and, and the staff about what they want, but I would say we probably spent more time talking to the players about what they might want as well. Um, we wanted something to be functional and practical. Uh, where they felt comfortable in the facility is last year they, they didn't spend as much time in the players' lounge as we would like. Um, or, in, or even in the upstairs side of the facility. I think um, this year you can see since we've remodeled this already, uh, when they got exposed to it on Friday, it was filled over the weekend. There was a lot of them here. I was over here this morning and uh, they're here again. So it, it's functional in the sense that they can come over relax. They can also in between classes or around classes and practice, they can, they can work on studies. If they want, they can do that here. They're certainly gonna eat, be eating here in the facility. Um, but you know they can also do get their iPads and if they want to do game study film there you know this morning if you've seen what they were doing it's a whole variety of things uh, going on in the facility but we wanted to also show the uh, you know kind of the legacy of our program so there's a number of things that represent the community when you come up with the city of Louisville as well as great players in our history we're you know we're going to be more pronounced about our academic excellence there'll be pictures of coach Satterfield with the graduating classes we obviously, if you saw in the back of the helmets, we had a helmet sticker recognizing the 21 graduates uh, that we already have in roster. But the other part, going back to the players, you can see me, see behind me, uh, Lamar Jackson's a part of our legacy and, and always will be, being a Heisman winner. We'd love to make space for another one, but while we have Lamar downstairs and upstairs, we recognize what he's done here. And, and I think it's meaningful to the players. Uh, it does represent a lot of great things individually, but also the teams that he was on were the one that was as close as we've been to really competing at a national championship level and what we strive to get back to. But when they're in here, uh, there's bunk beds for them. If they want to go back in the back and, and uh, take a nap, there's resting pods. They can certainly play games while they're here. Uh, if they got in between classes, uh, you know, I know that gaming is big these days with kids and we created a gaming area over there and then more themes around uh, the relaxed areas where they got pool table, ping pong, foosball, all those kind of things. 
and then on the screens that we have in here, they can watch whatever they want on the on the you know significant screen you have behind you, and they can control what's on the TV when they're here. So, but we want it to be their area, and uh, we want it to be cool and, and comfortable. And and uh, I can tell you the excitement from the players when they came in here on Friday before recruits saw it on Saturday was was outstanding. They're they're highly appreciative, is what I would probably say, in the response that they've they've given us as they've watched it come along. So. Um, I know we're excited about it. We were excited to unveil it. And while there's other maybe high, other high tech things, you're seeing this in college football and in college sports about you know creating some areas that are that are cool. I know that you've seen some things in the SEC. Um, we we wanted to not create all that in the locker room. I think that's the biggest thing that our our kids want to get away from the locker room at times too. And this is a way to do this to relax. So uh, they still got their privacy in the locker room to some degree they'll have it up here as well and then we obviously want to come up let them come up here and work on their studies and, and other things while they're here but um, there if, if there are any kind of barometer for us whether we got a, did a great job here I think uh, we've got nails up on this from the kids for sure and uh, and we're thankful about for Alan Muncie and Ark and the subcontractors he used to get this done I mean this this area of the building happened in 30 days literally changing over from ceilings to floorings to video to all the aspects and it, it happened some of it the design on the fly but it, it turned out terrific do you have any idea how you can measure if it how you know, where it puts you kind of with other schools that have the cool factor things yeah you know it's a it's an issue when everybody's seen lsu that's been 20 million dollars in a locker room i'm not sure we were ever going to go to that extent um you know our, our kids don't want to sleep in the locker room they want to be somewhere where it's peaceful there's it's well lit and music going on in the locker room and and again, there was a lot of open air space in some of them that we saw, much like you've seen in, in LSU's, but our kids still want their privacy. So they're still 18, 19 years old, and they still want their privacy, you know, when they're going in and out of the shower and all the other stuff. And I think that we tried to maintain that privacy with the locker room effects that we did, and we did, uh, uh, you know, renovate the locker room too. But I think this one, for us, we've seen a lot of them. You know, we've seen the slide at Clemson and so forth. But again, just going back to what's functional, for what the kids do on a day-to-day -day basis, that's what we were after. Do you have an estimate of how much this kind of the whole remodel cost? Yeah, we went through the board approval to get a approximately million five to renovate this, as well as what you've seen by the work that was done by Jack Porter downstairs in the hallways, the NFL area, and so forth. Uh, but it was right at about a million five. Everything you have going on with kind of. Opening opening day being yesterday, this being developed Friday, was it scheduled to kind of? Did you always want it to come out this weekend to kind of put everything in? Yes. The last few days? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's important. It's a big weekend. I mean, obviously the game was historic yesterday, and we knew we were going to have a lot of a lot of former players came in for the game. I think they were really excited to see what's going on. Uh, obviously with recruits coming in, it was important to get there. I, I can't thank Alan Muncie and his team enough for getting it done on time. They were. There was more people than we have in here today running around on top of each other to get it done. And it was, you know, we thought it was a very tight timeline. We obviously had to go through the, you know, the typical approvals at the university, cut our timeline tight. But uh, I'm so impressed we got it done and some of the nuances they created here to represent the program as well as the community. You mentioned recruits. Obviously, this is a selling point when it comes to recruiting. Did you get a sense on how that was? This was received from the guys that were in. Uh, impressed, yeah. and I, you know, we already had a great space. You know, I think to start with, so the the area itself was in good shape, and you got a view out the windows to the field. So I think there was already that cool factor of seeing the field. But I think when you come in here and combine all aspects of it, where they can you know get away individually if they want to do things as a group, I think that's the thing that. I, when I talk to the players and Seth Dawkins and some of those guys, that's the thing that they like is if they just want to be on their lo their own, they can do that. But if they want to be communal in their their core group or running backs or receivers, they can do that in here as well.